Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And after the last couple of videos, which have been, I would say, slightly on the negative side about what our government's been doing to help try and bring down our energy prices, today I've got some really good news because today the government officially announced the expansion of the boiler upgrade scheme. What does this mean? It means that air-to-air -air heat pumps and heat batteries are now included in the scheme. Why does this matter? And why did the media get it so wrong? We're going to talk about it today. So what did they actually announce? Well, the boiler upgrade scheme, for those that, that don't know what this is, this is a scheme where the government will contribute up to £7,500 towards the installation of an air source or ground source heat pump. That's been now running now for a couple of years. Um, tens of thousands of people have taken advantage of this because it helps bring the cost of a heat pump installation down to just a few thousand pounds, or in some cases, some people have even got it completely for free. But there's been one major exclusion from that scheme, and that is if you want an air-to-air -air heat pump, what's more commonly known as air conditioning, that's not included. Well, as of today, the boiler upgrade scheme has been expanded and now includes air-to-air -air heat pumps. So what's the difference between the two? Well, a traditional air-to-water heat pump basically replaces your gas boiler and does exactly what it, do it did. It will heat your radiators in your house to offer heating, and it will also heat your hot water. Now, an air-to-air -air heat pump differs in a couple of key ways. Firstly, it doesn't use radiators at all. Um, most of you will have seen air conditioning units where they have what's called a mini split unit. These are generally mounted on the wall, kind of up high. Um, I'll put a picture on the screen of a mini split unit, but you'll know what one when you see one. And you put these into different rooms around your house and it allows you to control the temperature. And this uses air conditioning that can also provide heat in the winter and cooling in the summer. These are generally cheaper to install than air to water systems because they don't require as much plumbing. Um, they're kind of standalone in that there is a unit that goes outside, just like an air to water heat pump. Then you drill a couple of holes in your wall, you run the cables through to the mini split unit that sits on the wall, and that's the whole installation. It doesn't require any changes to radiators. In fact, at that point, your radiators become defunct, so you can actually remove them if you're removing your boiler as part of the boiler upgrade scheme. This is really good for um, modern flats, you know, more modern style homes where maybe you don't have radiators. Maybe if you've got one of these sort of more modern glass and steel type houses, um, there isn't space on the walls to put radiators. So having another way of delivering heat into your house is, is great. And air to air systems have that real distinct advantage over air to water in that in the summer when it's really hot, they can cool your house at the same time. But they also have one major disadvantage in, the, in that they don't heat hot water. So there is no way for you to heat your water for your showers, for your baths, for your, for your washing of your dishes, if anyone still washes up manually. Um, they don't create hot water. So therefore, if you are gonna put an air-to-air -air system in, you need to have a think about how are you gonna get hot water? Now, there are people who do what they call a hybrid system where they keep their gas boiler and they still use that heat hot water and then they use an air-to-air -air system. Um, I'm not sure that's covered under the boiler upgrade scheme. I'd need to dig into the, the details, which haven't been published yet. But I think to, to qualify for the grant, you need to have your gas boiler removed in the same way that you would for, um, uh, for the boiler upgrade scheme. So you would need to think about, you know, are we going to install an electric immersion heater, a solar diverter? Um, there are uh, hot water cylinders out there that have integrated heat pumps. Now, if you want to know more about these systems, I will put a link to Tim and Kat's channel up on the screen. Um, they've had a, a heat pump hot water cylinder. So this is a hot water cylinder with an integrated heat pump on the top, um, I believe for over a year now, because they have an air-to-air -air system. So if you want to know more about air-to-air -air systems or heat pump cylinders, link to their channel will be in the description below. But that's just something to consider. If you are going to go down the air-to-air -air route, have a think about how are you going to get your hot water. Now, there are a number of different ways you can do this, but it's something that you do need to consider. 
Now, why does this expansion to the boiler upgrade screen matter? Well, basically it gives people more flexibility. Um, if you're looking at a system where you need to replace dozens of radiators, you maybe have a combi boiler today and you don't have space for a water tank, you know, there are all sorts of reasons why a standard air to water heat pump might not work for you. Maybe an air to air would, if you've got the ability to find some other way to heat your hot water. But the real thing this brings is cooling. We've all noticed that summers are getting warmer. Um, whether you believe in climate change or not is irrelevant. It is getting hotter every single summer, it seems. And there are days when you think we really could do with air conditioning in our house. Now, here in the UK, we traditionally ha haven't needed air conditioning. But there are a few days each summer where I think, well, I'm going to go get the air conditioner out of the garage. And actually something I'm considering for my own home office as I'm spending more and more time here. Um, I'm actually considering putting an air to air system into this office next summer. And this gives you the best of both worlds. You can heat in the winter, you can cool with us in the summer, all with the same system. Now, if you've been watching the media over the last couple of weeks, you will have noticed an absolute avalanche of articles about how the boiler upgrade scheme is dead. And with the budget coming up at the end of November, it doesn't matter whether you're on the left, on the right, the media has been filled with articles. There was just one a couple of days ago in The Guardian who... I would say is one of the more reputable sources. Um, certainly they generally fact check their uh, um, their articles a bit better and they don't really go for clickbait. But they had an article, which I'll put a link to in the description below, saying hundreds of thousands to lose heat pump subsidies in Reeves budget plan. Then on the other side of the equation, the Express, which is a an absolute rag of a newspaper here in the UK. Um, they had one saying, Ed Miliband humiliated, heat pump net zero. If you look in the industry press, manufacturing management had an article just recently that says, government reportedly considering cuts to boiler upgrade scheme funding. Well, if all of this was true, why would they be expanding the scheme just two weeks before the budget? Now, don't get me wrong. There is always the possibility here that one part of the government doesn't know what the other part of the government is doing but you would hope that there was some at least communication where they would say we're actually going to be reducing this don't launch a whole new section of that boiler upgrade scheme now all of these articles in the press have a couple of common themes they're all anonymously sourced a source in westminster said which we all know is just rubbish um there is absolutely zero correlation or comment from the Department of, of Energy, or what they call now Disney's or something like that. Um, and to be honest, anything like this that is published before the budget, you've got to take with a pinch of salt because the way Parliament works is they're not allowed to leak this kind of information out. To leak information out of, of, of the Chancellor at the Chancellor's office and would get them into a lot of trouble because this has to be announced in Parliament first. So therefore, the, the Chancellor isn't going to say, yes, we're doing this in the budget. No, we're not doing that in the budget. Yes, we guarantee we're going to do this because it will all get announced in the budget in Parliament for the first time. So they're very closed-lipped about this. So all of these news articles are just nonsense. They're just clickbait. They're just news organizations who want you to click so they can show you a thousand ads for things that nobody will ever buy. And really, this is becoming a major problem because it's very difficult to filter out the real news from these outrage-driven headlines. You know, speculation is treated as fact. And this is why the modern press is becoming very hard to take seriously. You know, it's all about outrage-driven headlines. It's speculation is treated as fact. And then they accuse governments of doing a U-turn when the facts actually do come out and they don't meet the speculation that they've been peddling for the last couple of weeks. So it's, government does U-turn on X. Government never said anything about X. You were the one that was saying they were going to do something and when they didn't do it, you're the one that's now taking umbrage with them because they didn't live up to your speculation. 
And these contrary narratives that are constantly going around make it very, very hard for anyone who's trying to actually find out what really is going on to separate the outrage-driven headlines from the facts. So what did the government actually do? And this is facts only. They expanded the boiler upgrade scheme. Now, the boiler upgrade scheme is still as of today, which is the uh, 18th of November. So we're about a week and a bit away from the budget. The boiler upgrade scheme still offers £7,500 towards the installation of an air source uh, or ground sourced air to water system. For air to air systems and heat batteries, those systems you can get up to £2,500 towards the cost. Now, the reason for the difference in the two is generally they are much, much cheaper to install because you're not re-plumbing your entire house um, uh, to, to install a heat pump. So basically what that's happening is this is just giving homeowners more choice. If for whatever reason an air-to-water system doesn't work for you, you now have the option of an air-to-air system or a heat battery with up to £2,500 of subsidy from the government. So this is going to bring, I think, real benefits because the heating side in the winter, just in the last couple of days, it has got really cold. Um, we had our first frost of the, the, the year this morning and better heating. House has been lovely and warm. But in the summer, the option to have cooling as well, I think a lot of people will jump on this. And couple that with solar and you get the perfect storm. So you can just imagine a day where it's 30 degrees outside, um, which is becoming more and more of a reality here in the UK, or certainly parts of the UK in the summer, um, where you've got solar panels on your roof that are generating electricity that is powering your air-to-air -air heat pump, which is cooling your house. So the sunshine is actually keeping your house nice and cool. So there's a huge synergy between air-to-air -air and, and PV systems, and I think a lot of people are going to jump on that. So I think this is a real positive step forward. It's kind of contrary to the narrative that the media has been saying about how this whole scheme is going to be uh, be finished in the budget. Um, gives more systems, more choice, lower upfront costs. So for those that are worried about the cost of installing an air-to-water system, an air-to-air uh, air system generally is a lot cheaper. We'll see if that uh, if that carries on once the grants come in. And it's future-proofing our homes for those hotter summers that we seem to be having every single year. So really the takeaway from this was to let you know that if you are considering a heat pump, you might want to take a look at air-to-air -air systems as well. Ignore the noise. Focus on the facts. You know, the, the press is just going to fill the, their newspapers and websites full of clickbait articles. The scheme seems to be expanding, subject to the budget in a couple of weeks. And I think this is good news for millions of homeowners. Anyway, that's my video for today. I hope you found this interesting. I will put links even to all of the bad articles in the description below. So if you want to click on them, um, just remember who you're clicking on when you click on them. And I hope you found this interesting. And if you have, and I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>